Howdy, it's Tobel Kane again, and this is part two of my discussion here of my closing mill. And remember, this was given to me by Chuck up in Detroit, and it was shown in a previous video. I haven't cleaned it up yet. I'm still uh, worried about getting the wiring uh, uh, sorted out, and I, and I think I do have it sorted out, and uh, that's what I really want to talk about. And uh, first of all, on the day of my meet and greet, uh, Dave Kelly gave me this phase converter so that's ready to go ready to be wired up but the problem here at the closing mill is that the motor is uh, 440 it's a three phase motor and it is presently wired for 440 volts looking down through that hole now <clears throat> none of the charts, the wiring charts, and I have several of them, one from Clausing and one from the motor manufacturer, it just doesn't make any sense with the wires that uh, are visible there and that are marked. And uh, I did put out a plea for help and I had, uh, oh shoot, 50 or 60 people that helped me. That was a temporary video, it's already off. Thank you for all of those uh, people that did uh, answer and uh, made uh, uh, a lot of sense, except some things didn't make sense because we got nine wires coming out of the motor and then nine and those are marked with a metal tag and then we got nine black wires connected to those uh, that go out and I, it just made no sense but finally someone pointed out the reason they're not marked is that the nine wires have a black wire connected to each one and they are going back into the conduit inside here the, the wire runner and they go around to the other side to the junction box and that's where the actual connections uh, uh, will have to be made the new connections so now it all makes sense and uh, I will go around to the other side and those are the uh, those wires have numbers on them but they're a little bit hard to read you can see that the plug is marked 480 volts, the original plug, and that comes out of the box here. I'm on the other side of the machine now, and I've taken this cover off, and the, the nine black wires from the motor have come around, and here they are. And as you can see, these aren't metal tags, so they're a little bit hard to read, but they can be traced with an ohm meter or, or a test meter or fluke meter or whatever. And uh, when uh, Dale gets here in about a half hour, this is where he's going to work, and I probably could solve this now, but uh, Dale offered to come up, and he's, a, he's an electrician, has his own company, and, uh, and he's going to go ahead and hook up the phase converter while he's here. So I really appreciate Dale coming up, so I'll have some pictures, pictures of him in a few minutes. And that that's, uh, solves the mystery that I'm going to work, Dale's going to work uh, here, not at the junction box on the motor. So, hope to have this running in a couple hours. Sure. Well, my friend Dale is here to rescue me. Look at the camera, uh, Dale. Oh. And uh, he came up from Metamora along with his son, uh, Zach, here. So. He does a lot of uh, electrical work and other mechanical work, so he's going to give it a go, and I sure appreciate it. No problem. And right away, he pulls the meter out. Just checking for resistance here. You can just kind of see the numbers. There's three. Zachary, could you please grab that drawing off the bench? Yeah. Thank you. One, three, four, three. But this is off the motor, right? So if they take power to one, four, and five, Ah, someone has miswired this. Um, when they were rebuilding from that, uh, I was part of the people doing the rebuilding. I took a header off a scaffold.
when Dale opened the box and checked everything uh, with meters and uh, uh, you, did you check resistance or what were you? Resistance. He, he checked resistance and using uh, Ohm's law, there's a good use for Ohm's law, he said this machine is already wired for 220 volt, uh, even though the plug uh, is a 440 plug and is marked 440. So uh, there was no need to swap any wires. It's, no. it's just uh, uh, was set, but but he's got it hardwired now or a temporary uh, wires on there, and the rotary phase con converter is running. I think you can hear it. Okay, Dale, let's see if it runs. Uh, turn the switch on. Okay. And by gosh, it worked. Yeah, it did. Check reverse. And it stops. There it goes. And it reverses. Very good. And you don't get shocked from it. That's better. So it wasn't an easy job, or it wouldn't have been for me, because I would have fiddled around trying to rewire it for a different voltage. But when he initially checked some of the numbers there, he said that uh, they didn't correspond with uh, what uh, we had expected. So that's when the, he broke out the, the ohm meter. And I think about uh, one hour is what he's worked on this so far, and, it, and it's up and running. And, I, you know, uh, Dale, I just can't thank you enough. That's quite all right. I appreciate it. <laughs> so now the next step will be to uh, get some junction boxes and plugs and things like that. Well, Dale Greenhall and his son Zach just left. He was here for several hours, and I just can't thank him enough, and he wouldn't accept any money for it. But uh, this just goes to show you that a person should assume nothing, because looking at this weird plug and, and reading the high voltage, I totally assumed, and you know what that makes out of uh, you and me, uh, that it was high voltage. But when he checked it with, uh, with meters and did a little Ohm's Law, I just told you that, that he said, well, this already is wired at, at uh, 220, three phase, unless someone has uh, mislabeled it. But no, it was 220, so when he uh, completed the connections there and at the phase converter. We fired it up and it uh, runs just great. So now I have a little more wiring to do with probably rubber cord here. And uh, then the job is done and of course I need to clean the machine up. It's 24 hours later and I've been working here for a couple hours and I've got this thing all buttoned up here in this junction box and I've run uh, rubber cord more than what I need right there in that coil, but that will allow me to move the rotary uh, phase converter outside, just outside the door here, if I need to, if it's too noisy uh, while I'm filming. So also on the converter here, I've installed a box and the wires and everything else, and a switch, so I can uh, very easily turn it on and off without doing any plug or unplugging. And that's very heavy wire that I ran, number 12, for, for crying out loud, I could run a 10 horse motor with that, but, uh, and it's 200 bucks worth of wire, but there'll be no voltage drop in this garage because I had to run that cord approximately 70 feet from the house until I do some other wiring or possibly run underground to the garage, depending on how much I use it. With the belt guard off, you can see the variable pitch pulleys here, and uh, let me run it through its paces, and it seems to work okay. That's the highest speed. lowest in direct drive, but of course there's back gears as well. This is the gearbox and the different speed here for the uh, power feed. But what I wanted to show you on this side is the speed control. This is very similar to what is on my closing lathe. As a matter of fact, I suppose it's the same part. to work okay. Well, that completes this video. Thank you for watching and 
there might be another part or two on this I'm not sure but I uh, hope you enjoyed it and I'm, I'm glad I made progress and that that uh, this machine seems to need nothing more than a good cleaning from this point on and it's ready to put to work this is Tubal Kane saying thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video